Welcome to Make Something. Today, we are making a toilet paper holder. Today's video is brought to us by Scott 1000. So we have all four pieces cut for this toilet paper stand. The next thing I need to do is cut a little dado along the top and the bottom of these pieces that's going to hold a piece of plywood. Now I have my blade set to half the height of the board. This is just the same blade that I used to rip and cross cut everything. So I went ahead and drilled holes on the two side pieces. These holes will hold the dowel, which will then hold the roll of toilet paper. So the next thing I need to do is put a miter on all four pieces and glue this up. But before I do that, I would like to tell you about today's sponsor, and that is Scott 1000. Scott 1000 toilet paper has 1000 septic safe and clog free sheets per roll that has been getting the job done since 19. 13. 1,000 sheets means less roll changing, and this stand is going to hold multiple rolls, making my life easier and uninterrupted. A life uninterrupted means I get to spend more time in the shop making fun things like this toilet paper stand. Let me tell you how this toilet paper stand is going to hold rolls of Scott 1000. Let's say you're entertaining and you have people over and you don't want to worry about running out of toilet paper. Well, first of all, Scott 1000 has 1000 sheets per roll. That means less roll changing. Second of all, this stand is going to hold four extra rolls that'll be visible down below. That means your guests won't be panicking and going through your cabinets trying to find more toilet paper. Another really cool feature about this stand is it's going to have a place to put your phone at the top. I know this sounds silly, but we've all been there. We're watching the game. You got to take care of business and you don't want to miss anything. So now you can just set your phone on top, never miss a single play and live a life uninterrupted. Scott 1000 is trusted for its flushability. It's septic safe and clog free and made out of 100% biodegradable tissue. It is made in the USA and free of perfumes and scents. Scott 1000 simplifies your choice at the shelf, reduces time spent on roll changes and virtually eliminates worries about clogs. Since you trust Scott 1000 toilet paper, you have more time to focus on what matters most. Thank you, Scott 1000, for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to this toilet paper stand. So now I need to add a miter on the inside of all four boards, and that's how they're gonna get joined together. I have always done this at the table saw by tilting my blade to 45 degrees, but today I thought I would try something a little bit different, and I have a 45 degree chamfer bit in my router. Either way should work, I just wanted to try something different. So now on the bottom of all four boards, I want to draw a little arc there and cut that out. This is a decorative element. And then on the two side pieces, I want to do the same thing. And to draw that arc, I am going to draw a 20 inch diameter circle on a piece of paper and use that template to transfer that line to the wood. Now, two things. One, I don't have paper big enough for a 20 inch circle. Not a big deal. I only need part of that circle. And two, I don't have a compass big enough to draw a 20 inch diameter circle. So I just have a board here with a pencil clamped on one end and a screw clamped on the other end, 10 inches apart. And I'm just going to draw this on some construction paper. Now I'm wondering if I could have clamped my X-Acto knife in there instead of the pencil. So on the bottom of all four boards, I'm coming in a half inch from the edge. Then I'm gonna take my arc and meet those two lines. 
there we go. So now on the two side pieces, again, we're gonna come in a half inch and then we're gonna use our short front as a template. I'm gonna push that all the way to the bottom and then mark that right there. And then we're gonna use that same paper template and then connect those two marks. And you do wanna make sure that you're doing it on what's going to be the front of the side pieces. Now we can cut all of those out on the back. Now I'm drawing the opening on the front here. I'm gonna cut this part out on the bandsaw, but I need to round these over here. The bottom of a paint can should work here as well. went ahead and cut a 1 8 inch plywood top and bottom. You want to make sure that plywood bottom fits into the groove and is not too big otherwise our glue up is going to be a little rough. This top one is going to have this decorative element so we're going to draw another arc on there and I need to know where to start. I'm going to mark where that piece fits there. Same with the other side. And this is that same template from before. And I want it to meet there and meet there. So now it is time to glue everything up. I've got that groove for the plywood bottom facing down on my bench. And I'm just going to position these together now we use a straight edge to make sure our bottom is flat. And I'm just going to put some masking tape along the edge there. Naturally, this is going to be a very strong joint because it's all long grain to long grain. So I'm not going to use much glue at all because I don't want a lot of squeeze out. Typically, I don't put any glue in that groove at all, but this top piece only is going to be connected by three pieces since that front sticks out a little bit. So I'm going to put in that piece right there. I'm going to put in this piece back here. Those two seams look really good. Let's check the back here. Not good at all. All right. We got some work to do. No squeeze out on the inside. That's exactly what I wanted. I got this little gap there. So I'm just gonna use a piece of tape. No clamps today. No clamps today. A couple of these pieces of tape I pulled off and I'm reworking so I can get a nice tight joint. Imagine if somebody made masking tape that stretched and could work as a clamp. I mean, there is a little bit of elasticity to it, but not, not much. Make sure I have no gaps in my corner there because that will be visible. That was a little stressful, sweating a little bit, but that is going to work. That is our glue up. Now, when I mitered these edges, I didn't go all the way to the very edge. I left a little bit. That is because I know that I'm going to sand that over, kind of round that over a little bit. So it might look like there's a gap there, but that's all gonna be taken care of. So now we can let that dry for an hour or two. We can work on the dowel that's gonna go right there and the phone holder.
I ended up turning the holder on the lathe and it made these little nubs on there so it falls into place and then doesn't come out. Now, if you don't have a lathe, I did do a test. That is a one inch hole, and this is a seven eighths inch dowel that I got from Home Depot. And when I slide that in there, it does not fall out of place. So no lathe, no problem. And if you wanted to be certain that this didn't come out, you could cut little disc and glue them on the end there that is just smaller than the size of that hole. So I'm gonna put mine back in there, the one that I made. And the reason I made it out of maple is because I had the, the maple plywood up top there. So I wanted those two colors to just kind of go together. Then up top, we got the phone holder. The phone can go that way or this way. I also made it so it sits above the ridges and you can put a tablet in there as well. So with the mitered corners, if you do end up with a little gap, a great trick is just fill it with some glue and then take a screwdriver and burnish those edges over and it closes up and you will never know that there was a gap there. And then if you still have tiny little gaps, you can always mix some sawdust and some wood glue and fill that up and sand it away. All the breaking and rounding over of the edges was just done with sandpaper and a little bit of hand sanding, no router bits. And then up top here, where this lip meets this curve, I did have to chisel away and kind of sand that profile down a little bit, just a couple minutes of work. And it turned out really, really good. I'm very, very happy with this. I used a spray lacquer for the outside. It is my finish of choice lately because it dries so fast. And especially when you use an HVLP gun, it atomizes it so small that it dries within minutes like I'm serious like two three minutes I can go and move on to the next coat one very very light sanding before the final coat and I get an almost perfect finish when I get the hang of the HVLP gun a little bit more and I gather up a little bit of knowledge I'll probably do a video on that but right now it's still new to me but it is pretty amazing the finishes that I can get out of it and I can do three four coats in like a half hour, which is absolutely amazing. And it came out flawless. I will have plans available for this on my website. I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe and like and do all that fun stuff. Let me know what you think of this down below. Thank you to Scott 1000 for sponsoring today's video. That is going to wrap it up. We'll see you next week with a brand new woodworking project. As always, be safe, have fun, stay passionate, and make something. Oh, 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 you got to go over the top. You got to go over the top. There is no other way than over the top. Let me know down in the comments if you are over the top or if you do it the wrong way.